Well, uh, DJ Reckless has returned. I made it back. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm going to let you uh, introduce our guest. Guys, I brought Josh. Whoa. Let's, re let's rerun that. <laughs> it's I'm new to this. Okay. I've only been doing this since I was 17. Guys, today I brought my friend Josh Wynn with me, 25-year-old realtor. 25, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I met him, I think you were 23 when I met you. Back in the day. Back in the day, pre-COVID, honestly. Hey, uh, thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, Josh, yeah, it's uh, nice to meet you. Welcome. Uh, Texas Mike in the chat room says, uh, Josh Wynn is a great real estate agent. He got my family into our forever house here on the west side. See, bingo, that's what we like to hear. I yeah, love it. Yes, yes. And uh, Eileen Clark Houghton is in the chat and says he is great. He must be fixing his hair for the camera. <laughs> I feel like Eileen he was. Eileen is the best. I was just with Eileen today. She's an awesome agent in our oh, office as well. Oh, very good. Very good. So, uh, Christian, you had said uh, when when uh, kind of uh, introducing this, um, this new segment that you're doing for us on Thursdays that you wanted to bring in people who have had a, a, a real effect on your life, who have influenced you. Honestly, um, yeah, and that's the goal for this whole segment or whatever this may turn into at yeah. this point but yeah no i wanted to bring in people and josh is one of those people like for me i realized social media was huge because like you look at his you look at his social media his instagram like he is pulling you're pulling like six thousand seven thousand views on instagram reel right now and that's like that's nuts and you're you're taking up you, i feel like you're taking an approach to like real estate that not many people do or not many people around here do, at least from what I've seen. Yeah, at least. So I got into real estate. I was licensed February of 2021. I've been selling houses since about last April. And most people spend like a ton of money to, to generate business. Yeah. But I've just been doing like Instagram reels and Facebook posts and like handwritten le letters to my friends and family. And I've grown like a six figure business in like a year, you know? So it's... uh. It's crazy because some people, I don't know, do OnlyFans or whatever they do. And <laughs> like, here you are, you, you can make reels and just sell houses like crazy. Yeah. You know? Wow. That's and incredible. And like that correlates into DJing too. I can't tell you how many gigs I've booked like just off Instagram or TikTok or stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and it just shows that like you don't have to spend money to m market yourself on social media. Mm-hmm. You're, he's about to break like what is it? I think it's two point five thousand right now, on 20, on 2, Instagram. Twenty five hundred, yeah. Little little landmark, you know. I mean, you're you're a lot more than me. Get out of here! You're blowing up too. <laughs> to a point, <laughs> Matt. He when smells it, when great TikTok too. When TikTok doesn't shadow ban me, I am. <laughs> you smell great too. You're the man. Oh, very oh, good. You, you can smell that from over there. Welcome to Gonzo. Prada. Gonzo Prada? goes. You smell uh, great. YSL. Oh, nice. For nice. young thugs. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. We're going there. So when, <laughs> now was that your, Josh, was that your idea early on when you decided to get into real estate? Did, did you know that you were going to take that approach of, of, uh, of using social media or did that kind of come later? Uh, what was the sequence of events? So I went to school for pre-med and then I was like, I don't really want to do that. So I got into medical sales cause I wanted to do the degree. Yeah. And my dad expected me to do, use my degree because school was expensive, you know? <laughs> yeah. So then. <laughs> When COVID hit, it created an opportunity for me to kind of side hustle while doing real estate school and my main job from home. Yeah. Um, so I saved up some money to facilitate the transfer from a full-time medical sales job to commission-only real estate. Mm -hmm. And even after a couple months, so first three months, I didn't sell anything. Yeah. So my income was nothing. And I'm like, everyone's like, okay, spend like two G's a month on Zillow leads or realtor.com leads. And I'm like, I have no money to do right, this. Right. Well, what can I do? I can send a hundred letters a, a week or I can make like a Q and a on Facebook or I can do like I did a TikTok a day until I sold my first house. Yeah. And I realized people were, even after I just sold a couple because I posted every day, people are like, yo, you're killing it, bro. You're killing it. And I'm like, like I live in my parents' house and like I have like no money at all. Like yeah. I could barely put gas in my car for the first six months. Yeah. You know? Um, but I guess to reiter can you just reiterate the question? I always go off on tangents. Oh like no, that. I, I was just curious if, if uh using a social media strategy, if that was there yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was I did it because it was free. Yeah. And I'm I've always been really social and I thought like, oh, you have to door knock and cold call. But you can reach your friends and family for free mm -hmm. using social media. Mm -hmm. And now TikTok and Reels and stuff like that with the 
proclivity to like go viral, now you can meet thousands of people you wouldn't have met before. So now you have your family and friends, like your aunt and uncle on Facebook and your old colleagues on LinkedIn and your peers on Instagram, but now you can meet everybody with Reels and TikTok. Yeah. You know, and get that following and bring them to YouTube. And if you get all these subscribers, now you can monetize that. Yeah. You know, so it all kind of adds up. Did you take any courses or anything about social media or was this kind of you just, you just learned as you went? And because it seems like something where you can kind of learn as you go, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so I never took any any formal education on it. Um, it was it's really just intuitive to me. Yeah. I, I think of I'm like, OK, like think of your favorite like celebrities or athletes. They post every day and we don't mind it. It's because they're super cool. But like for your, your average Joe, I guess like me, I'm like, you know what? I can't post every day if it's boring com content right so people are like oh sold <laughs> under contract coming soon it's mm -hmm. just boring i'm like if people if i'm gonna post every day it's got to be some fun stuff that people want to see you yeah. were doing you know I mean? a lot of re like gag reels that i was like i i loved like the one where you were literally in the walk-in shower after get getting out of the pool and, like we're on a yeah. phone with a client that that's the type of stuff people eat out you because know, it shows people, you're dedicated yeah and, and people want to see the real you because exactly. on social media nowadays in the beginning it was just showing like raw moments like instagram used to be just a picture app mm -hmm. and now everything has like changed and instead of seeing raw moments you're just seeing highlights yeah and i think people are tired of that and like i just show like raw, like hey, in the beginning, like I was just like I know nothing about real estate. I couldn't even tell you what a furnace is, you know. <laughs> can't Whereas tell you like what it is. like the five colleagues next to me are like, hey, I'm your new neighborhood expert. And it's like I think from the from the jump, I was authentic. Yeah, I didn't know anything, but I'm going to show you the journey to figuring it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. And I feel like people like to see inside that lens on social media as opposed to to seeing through a fake one. That makes sense. You know? And I'll yeah. be a hundred percent real with you. The way you see Josh right now is exactly how he is out in public. Yeah. I've had some nights where this kid, with this kid, where like he was literally putting business cards in the bathroom. Like, that's the. Yeah. This kid well, is the smart. king of marketing. <laughs> yeah. This kid gave me so many ideas. Dude, he's on our fridge. I have yes. his calendar on yeah, the that fridge. That is true. Still. I can vouch for that. Yep. <laughs> Great play. Sorry, not to, not to be a fr like fangirl or anything, but I'm, I'm really not. Just, you know. How'd you guys meet anyway? You, um, you and Christian meet. I met you because Shiloh Moore, to bring it way back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I ran, he was posting on his story about you, and then I followed you and then saw what you were doing, and it caught my eye, and I was like, oh, this is this is great. I think I think you had Shiloh on... We did, we did like a little podcast yes. together, because um, Shiloh um, and his twin Isaiah, they're really like, they're big sneakerheads, they're big into brand. And he, they had me on their podcast, or Shiloh was doing a podcast at one point. Um, and it was super cool. We we're just chatting about like what's next in life. And it was, he has like a, a decent following. So yeah. um, I, that's definitely where you saw me yeah, on there. Yeah, definitely. And then I just was like, hey, like, hey, you're, you're, you're killing it. For, we were on, in contact over social media for a little bit. And then I think we, you think you came out and saw me at 603 last year around yeah, yeah, Halloween. Yeah. And that's when I recognized you. And I was like, yo. For me, that was like when social media translates to DJing. Right. Like right. to have some people follow me on social media and come out to my gigs. It's like, whoa, okay. And it doesn't happen that often for me. So I assume uh, getting back to, you know, because I was, I was asking about, you know, how is, how has Josh been an influence on you? Is it, is it because of the, um, I mean, I mean, I'm going to, well, here, let me assume, I'm going to assume this and tell me if I'm right. I assume it's a combination of of um, you know his his ability to to use social media, which you're also doing, of course, for for your career. But also, obviously, you know, meeting him today, Josh, you're a very positive person. You've got a lot of energy about you, and I can see where that would be. That's you know very inspiring mm -hmm. to you. I would assume it's inspiring to me. Just I I love talking to entrepreneurs anyway, and and you know I appreciate it. it. So I this is fun for me too. But um, but I mean, am, am I right? Is that kind of am I going yeah, in the right definitely. direction? Definitely. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, I like that you picked up on the like the positive energy first because um, after I graduated college, my first thing was I'm like, oh, I don't want to stay in the same place. A lot of people get content with what they're doing and they they never leave and they you know yeah, what I mean. That's so where I'm at. I made a personal growth page on Instagram called Positive Like Josh. Oh. And now my real estate brand is sold by Win. So I kind of did a play off the first name originally, yeah. and now I. Because I was doing my full time job in medical sales yeah. while like side hustling with positive like Josh, but that was for free. Okay. You know? So I wanted to find a passion. 
that could also make me money. And that's what the brand sold by win is. Gotcha. So, so okay. I had the experience of running a personal Instagram and then positive like Josh. And now this one. Okay. So people are like, Oh, like, how'd you grow that so fast? It's like, this is the third time doing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So now if I were to like maybe become wicked passionate about doing radio stuff, maybe that page would blow up as faster because it would be the fourth time around. That's right, sort right. of what I'm doing with my next venture is like reckless vision. What Like what this is, it's, it, I'm going to be making like TikToks and Instagram reels on that. And it, I'm going to try to build that too, along with the DJing mm -hmm. thing. Cause I don't, for me, it's been, I think I realized this way, way before I went on tour. Actually, I don't want to just be known as a DJ. I want to be known as more of like an influencer and someone who people can relate to. And that's why I, I love doing DJ TikToks, but I also hate them because it's <laughs> like, they're so, it's so niche oriented. You can't really see like when I'm just behind a controller that who I really am. You don't want to you know? pigeonhole yourself. Cause you're always on the stage. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm trying to find content people to film and then there's just no one to film anymore. What do you mean? I, I want to start doing more behind the scenes type stuff. Oh, okay. For DJing, like setting up for gigs, stuff like that, promoting. Yeah. Because like, if, if I'm not DJing on stage at 603, I'm outside promoting myself. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm DJing here tonight, blah, blah, blah. And like, that's what I'm going to be doing with the college nights. I'm going to be going around to like all the colleges, stuff like that, playing frat parties and promoting my Thursdays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a hustle when it comes down to it. Well, it is, but you're very, you're very committed. You're very dedicated. I think um, this is the most committed I've ever been to anything. Yeah, no, I think so too. Uh, Jenny and I were talking about that just recently, you know, because when you, um, when you moved in with us, you know, you were kind of dabbling in some different things between and, photography, and, and this and kind of trying to find a direction. And, and I know too, that, you know, I, I've, I've heard people kind of give you a hard time about it, or they were giving you a hard time about it in the beginning. Oh, he's, you know, he's lurching around from one thing to another but you know i always looked at it as you know when at, at your age i mean you're so young this is the time when you should be trying mm -hmm. different things you know you don't you don't have a family to support you don't have any kids you know this is the time to, to try different things and then you you uh you tried djing and that was you know another one of the things on the list of things but then you you seem to really uh commit to it and and you've it's um it's remarkable uh you, you're one of the hardest working people I know. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I, I just really admire that. Yeah. No. Um, and I thank you for that because yeah. like, honestly, when I first got into this DJing thing and I still, I still to this day, there's been days I want to quit when I'm DJing to a par of three people. <laughs> like there were shows on tour, which I'll, I'll admit it. They flopped. We had three people come to yeah. some place in Austin, Texas. Like it, it's tough, you know, yeah. but it's stuff like that where I went on tour with five guys I, I met on the internet. Yeah. You know, and it was fun. It was it was a good boots on the ground experiment and, you know, get my name out there nationally instead of locally. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, to compare it to uh, an experience I had on social media, um, I had a TikTok go viral last year. It wasn't even related to real estate. It was about me trying to find a girl at a bar and it got like two and a half million views on TikTok. Oh my God. And two, two and a half million. It was like yeah. ridiculous. People were like, I'm from Poland. What's New Hampshire? I'm from Japan. Like, it was Dude. ridiculous. And people in the, before I lose my train of thought, people in the beginning were like, oh my God, this is so sweet. Like, let's like help, help them find each other. Like, we'll pay for the dinner. But once it blew up, people were like, wow, this kid's cocky. I don't like him. So it, I just, love it. it just changes their lens. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. So people in the beginning, kind of with you, in this instance, it's the opposite. Like, oh, like, I don't believe in it. Like, or just like, like, like when I started, like, oh, like he's just going to try it and then stop, you know, because like you start out and being mm -hmm. your own engineer, you got to engineer entrepreneur. You got to gain a ton of traction. Yeah. Like last exactly. year, the whole year I made 26 grand and that's like a good month now. Right. But like right. last year, you know what I mean? Like people are kind of coming out of the woodwork now. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I'm the same person. Yeah. Yep. I've been this, I've been, I am as consistent as they come. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But now when it works out, they're like, oh, that's cool. Now, like when when you, DJ Reckless, continue to blow up even more, people are going to be like, oh, like, I know him. We used to hang out at the GOAT. Yep. We used to hang out at 603. <laughs> Some long and you're gonna be like, the GOAT. <laughs> and you're going to be like, actually, I don't recall you being there. Right. Literally, you know? I'd be like that Oh, we nowadays. went to school together. We went to school. Can you get us backstage? And you're going to be like, oh, interesting. Right. I ran into that <laughs> a lot when I first started DJing and... When I gave off that vibe where I'm like, hey, listen, I'm not going to risk my job to get you backstage. Uh, everyone seemed to like drop off. 
for yeah. me it's for me it's my job it's my job first mm-hmm. and i wish people who who always use that uh remember me when you're famous would remember me now that'd be great yeah right right yeah exactly it, it's fun I, I love djing though and it's for me it's it's a passion and I'll, I'll always do it even if i stop doing it like club wise stuff like that i'll always be on like doing it somehow whether it's online or something like that Christian, I remember when you were playing guitar, and I, I oh, always that was a rough time. But I life. always thought you were like really good at that. I, yeah. I don't know. Oh, he I, came, he came in and played uh, here. Uh, did you remember that? You you played live on the show. Yeah, I did yeah. that a few times. Yeah. But, and the guitars the car, the guitars coming back. I just want to make that clear. I just think you're really good at it, and I'd hate to see you put that down for us. Oh, I'm not. I've w- when I was on tour, we were producing in every hotel room we were in. I'm I not trying to be songs. a fangirl. Of course. <laughs> hey. It'd be like that. Yeah, no. It'd be it, like that. No. All right, just, just, just to help you guys. <laughs> but yeah, no. I'm definitely. There's a lot of tracks that I have that are gonna be coming out from that I made over tour. I think I've shown Matt a few of them or one of them. No, one of you, no, you haven't. Show, I, I keep asking you. One you of them's you out already, but it's it's it not a clean song yet. And I'm I'm I well, I don't know if it's out yet. It's supposed to. What's what's today? It's, uh, no, it comes out tomorrow. Acoustic like. or oh. electric? Uh it's it's neither. It's hip hop. Oh, that's I cool. I produced. I produced oh. it. Uh, with this guy, with um, this guy Abstract and a few other people. So we could play it on the show. I can make a radio of it. Edit. I'm good at that. Yeah, for we, sure. We could give it a world radio. You know, I like to do the world radio premiere. For on, sure. Yeah. No. Show, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I've been bugging him since he got back from tour. Do you have yeah. Do you have something yet that you've produced yourself? There's nothing yeah. that's like release, release <laughs> yet though. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's nothing like that. I want my name in the title. I don't want to just be a, a side credit in it. You know. Right. Right. If we're gonna do something like that. Um. Yeah, you know, like um, collaborating has its place, but you want some stuff where you can say, "Hey, this is me." Yeah, is well, I, I want to be like, "Yeah, this is me on the vocals," or "Me, this is me like playing the keyboard or something like that." Yeah, exactly. Um, Josh, I assume so. You don't do the medical sales at all anymore at this point, right? No. You've let that go. Yeah. Did you? Um, was that uh, obviously you were doing that at the time to, to to pay the bills? But do you did you learn anything from that that you use in uh, in your real estate career? Or yeah, so this is actually super funny. Um, so just real quick and then I'll kind of answer that question. So my boss in medical sales, I, when you give your two weeks in sales, they just say like, see you later. Cause yeah. I don't want you moving your book of business and stuff. Right. So in the past two months, he's gotten his New Hampshire and mass real estate license and, oh. he, and he works at my brokerage now. Oh, no kidding. My old boss. And then he bought me dinner and is asking how, like what I did too, oh, you know what I mean? I'll be John, damned. if you're listening, I love you. Oh. We're hanging out next week. But uh, hey, it was a great first job. I started ten days after uh, college. Mm-hmm. It was um, hey, it was a good learning experience. Like like lower base pay, yeah. To be honest, but like I was commuting to Lawrence. Um, it was eight thirty to five, but it was really like seven thirty to six. Oh, yep. with the commute. So yeah, like yeah. guys like Gary V, like entrepreneurs, they'll mm-hmm. say like, hey, like do your side hustle, like seven to midnight and like and when that becomes bigger that can be your main thing right but like i was in a job where i wasn't making much money and between the commute and the job like i was spending so much time and i was tapped by the time i got home that's and this positivity and this this guy who i am now that job killed it so i got out of school like i was in school i was um i was an ra i was a tour guide i was pre-med i was in a fraternity i did all this stuff because i had so much energy yeah but then i got into the real world and i was working a job that i was like kind of eh about yeah i was like we gotta change this and yeah it, if it weren't for covid i would not be in real estate that's because because in covid i did my medical sales job in the first two hours of the day and then i played Fortnite and did real estate school the remaining no part. no kidding yeah oh wow i was learning i'm like okay i could do th- my job quicker and then do other stuff yeah you know? so that's yeah. when the creative juices came back um and i just quit cold turkey uh january 21st or january of 2021 oh wow i I tried that like t-mobile like you saw i would work what nine to nine to eight p.m go do my gig and then come back home and yeah yeah. and then whatever yeah when i quit in may it felt like a little bit of me was coming back and then when i got back from tour i realized how the bank account was looking i'm like you know what i'll go to a slower store yeah you know maybe (laughs) i'll have more time to focus on other things too right and now that i'm back at t-mobile it's like I sort of know what I'm doing, and I feel a lot better about it now. Yeah. You know? Wait. I have, a, I have a question for Joss, if you, you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, are there days when you're just like, I don't have it. Like, like you seem super positive, yeah. super, like, likable. Yeah. 
There are days where you're like, I'm just not going to go out of the house because I'm not feeling it today. Like, there's a lot of people out there listening that like, maybe going through some, like, depression stuff. Yeah. Do you ever get depressed? Do you ever get, like, down? Or do you just kind of convince yourself to get up and go? So it's kind of interesting. Like, we're having a conversation, and you just, like, you came in with it, and I'm already smiling because I'm like, this is, like, something I think about, like, literally all the time. Um, and... I guess the biggest thing last year was because I'm I'm helping all my family and friends. Yeah. And I'm just like, what if I run out of people to help? You know? And, like, when I do well, like, last year I did seven deals. And then this June I did five. In July I did three. And then August I did four. And then I have wow. four, to, four coming up in September. And I think I'm like, like, what if I'm doing so well? And now I'm, like, on the radio show and I got a billboard. And now I'm like, what if it all stops? Right. But the thing is, it's like. I always find a way out of it because when you're in like a one man or a one woman business, if you're, if you, if you can't snap out of this, like a negative mental state, like your business stalls, it's yeah. done. Yeah. So you gotta see, like, I've been there. Like you really gotta like, like I have days where I'm like, damn, like what if, what if, uh, like what if I just, what if it just stops working? What yeah. if people don't hit me up on Instagram or they stop liking the Facebook and stuff like that. But the thing is, if, the fact that other people have done it, like, it, it makes me believe that I can do it. Right. Like, I have never even owned a house. I just learned the difference between a, a furnace and a boiler, and, I, and, I, and, <laughs> I've, and I've sold 23 houses this year. Septics I've had more experience with. Yeah. But, What's uh, your trick? What's your trick to get yourself in that mode, like? I just, uh, so, I have a lot of close friends who have kind of recently come out and said, hey, like, I'm on, like, anti-anxiety, antidepressant mm -hmm. stuff, and... And I have, there have times, especially in college, where I felt overwhelmed and, and depressed and, like, anxiety is something that I experience. But, like, when I tell somebody, like, I told one of my close, close friends, I was, I told them, I'm like, hey, if you were driving your favorite car and you had, like, a ton of money and you weren't living in, like, like a sketchy multifamily right now and all this other stuff and you had a good relationship with your parents, how would you feel? And he's like, I'd feel fine. I wouldn't need anything. And I'm like, I think a lot of people are forcing themselves into situations where they, they aren't mentally healthy. Mm -hmm. You're working a job you don't like, and you don't have money to get out of a negative family situation, and maybe you don't have transportation and this and that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But me, like, at the end of the day, I reflect, I'm like, I have, I have more than I could ever need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's always people in, like, rigid nine to five in bad family situations who are the ones who are saying, oh, like, Josh, like, I need to take pills to get by. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day... Like I can being self employed is like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. If I need a break, yeah. I can I can go in the car, I can play with my favorite song, I can treat myself to dinner and go alone. I can sleep in, I can take a mental health day. Right. And right. I think it's the flexibility that like that a lot of people don't have. And I felt the most depressed when I was the most like boxed in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, I, not, um, it's not being able to take a step back. Yeah. So right. you yeah. tell people I'm like, hey, if you had everything you ever wanted, would you feel depressed? Probably not. So be you know, more flexible is your advice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, just like the whole, like I did a, one of my capstones in school was on uh, the medicalization of ADHD. Oh. And it, and it was interesting because ADHD is defined by um, someone who doesn't grow out of childlike characteristics by age like 11. But the average age that ADHD is diagnosed is four to seven. Yeah. So again, it's people who don't grow out, grow out of childlike tendencies, like attention and stuff like that. Yeah. But the average age it's diagnosed is four to seven. So you're telling a mm -hmm. four a four to seven year old to like sit down in a chair and do this. What if it's just that he doesn't want to do what you want him? You're telling him to do. You know. You, you, it's just that they just they don't want to like when people force me to do something or force me to read a book that I don't like. That that's gonna take forever. But I can rip yeah. through a book I love in a day. Right. Yeah. You right. Know? Yeah. I think it's just let people do what they want to do and what they're passionate about. You don't know Dr. Kevin, do you? Uh, I don't think I'm familiar. Okay, I, I should connect you with him because he, he hosts a, a show online, but one of his big, he talks a lot about ADD, ADHD, um, and he's written books about it. Like he, he wrote a book called Managing the Gift, and it's all about how it's actually, okay. you know, how uh, being diagnosed with that isn't uh, necessarily a bad thing because people with uh, ADHD are highly productive. And I, I just, I think you'd enjoy, uh, yeah. I think you'd enjoy talking with and him. People say, have told me, like almost as like a backhanded, compliment they're like oh josh like you seem like you have adhd all the time and i'm like well boy am i channeling it you right, know before right. mm -hmm. if, if you aren't like managing stuff it's just like 
it doesn't feel good, but like me, like I'm putting everything into real estate. There you go. Or everything into social media or like I wanted to get into the gym. So instead of just going with my friends, I hired a personal trainer. Yeah. Like you just got to dive in a hundred percent. Yeah. And like the people in real estate who treat it as a job instead of like a lifestyle and a career, like it's tough. Yeah. Like go, going up against somebody who's like yeah. super obsessed with it. Oh, of course. I, I yeah. say the like, same thing with that. Yeah. yeah. Like if, if, so, if you really like singing, but you're, or the person who really likes singing is always going to do better than the person who's like, oh, I got to wake up and sing today. Right. You're never going to yeah. be the person yeah. who's passionate about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you I, know what? I want to get up and play ball in the NBA where you're going to be going against Tatum. Can you do that? Because he doesn't sleep. You know? <laughs> right. <just> doesn't. <laughs> well, you said something too about, um, you know, uh, people being depressed who are, who are stuck in jobs they, they don't like. And, and I, it's, um, and you know, I've been there. I mean, we've all been there, but it's, totally. it's, uh, always staggering to me to think about, you know, just the millions and millions of people who every day go to work, you know, five days a week and spend eight hours, 40 hours a week, 40 to 50 hours a week doing something they don't enjoy. And it just seems like such a waste of life. That's why people hate people who get to do what they love mm -hmm. and succeed at it. Like there's they, so they, many haters they, at it hate you. because True. they're like, they why do. do you get to be an artist? <laughs> why do you get to be a DJ? Why do you get to be a real estate guy? Like, right. why do you get to be on the radio? They, and they're, they and they're hate that. And they're resentful. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Only when you make it though. Right. Be right. In the beginning, they're like, Oh, like I wish you the best. I wish you the yep. best. You make it. And they're like, Oh wow. <laughs> oh, I love when people talk trash <laughs> about me. It just, it fuels, it fuels me. There's been people who own clubs out here who have talked trash about me. And I'm like, all right, continue. I mean, give me two or three years. I'm going to show you that you're making a big mistake. Like, right. You need motivators, though. Exactly. Yeah. And no, to go back on what he said, where he was, I like, just totally lost my train of no, thought. No, no. Going off, I think what you're going to say, like, like, I have an example of someone who's close to me. This person was working from home in their dining room for two years with no social interaction. And they wow. were... And they eventually came to me with saying like, yeah, I've been pretty depressed, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, like, I, I don't blame you. You have been working like, like a fiend for two years with mm -hmm. no change in environment and no socialization and you feel trapped. Yeah. If you had a better job, if you had a better living situation, if you could do what you want and had flexibility, would you feel better? Oh well, yeah. But like, I don't. And I'm like, well, bingo. You know, <laughs> right. by all means, there are, there are more than one way to be self-employed. Yeah, I work most. It's interesting. Most of the people I work with day to day are self-employed. Yeah. The landscapers I recommend, the loan officers I recommend, the insurance people I recommend, contractors, handyman, you know, so it, it's kind of cool. Like once you get into that community, yeah. everyone's kind of like minded. So you, so you just continue to project up. Yeah. Right, right. You know, like right now, like I only surround myself with people who are, I don't want to say not yes men, but like, like minded. Yeah. Like yeah. We have the same vision. That's We're why, working towards something. And that's yeah. why I, I tried to hang out with you because honestly, like you have the, you have sort of the same mindset as me where you just grind and grind and grind no matter what. And honestly, like to go back on what you were just saying about staying inside and stuff like that, part of the reason I got into DJing and, you know, photography was I don't go out unless I'm doing something to work because my social anxiety when I'm out is the worst. And so like if I'm working, we'll then fix that. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I used to go out with him. Yeah. yeah. To the goat. And yeah. this kid used to support me so much because I was trying so hard to get a residency at the goat for the longest time. And this kid used to tag them and everything. We used to tag them and try to get them to book me and they just would never do it. But you know, it's a thought that counts. And people like that are the people who I try to surround myself, the people that support me no yep. matter what. Yeah. You know? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Has anyone, uh, I, it, it's getting to be five o'clock and I know you've got to go. Um, I, I am curious though, has anyone else in real estate come to you and ask you for advice or, I mean, I, I guess if they're your competition, you don't necessarily want to help them, but your advice with the social media, uh, marketing because uh, a lot of real estate agents obviously aren't utilizing it the way that you are. Yeah. So uh, one of my good friend friends and colleagues, uh, Oliver Boschman, he's actually my broker's brother. He told me he was like, uh, he's like, Josh, to be honest, during your first year, like he's like, I thought you were, he's like me and a lot of people in the office thought you were grinding your gears or uh, spinning your wheels. That's what yeah. it was, spinning your wheels. Yeah. Because I'd post every day and nothing would happen. Yeah. But the thing is, you can buy leads and they work right away. But to do this organic mm -hmm. thing, 
it takes a little bit more time. Yeah. You know? Um, and just cue, I, I'm, I love going off on tangents. Remind me again. Oh, no, I was just curious if, if any other real estate oh, agents have, yeah, have come yeah. to you. and. So in, in the beginning, they're like, oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And they're like, oh, wow, it actually did work. And then now everyone's being like, hey, Josh, can we do like a training here? <laughs> like, can you set me up on like local Google ad services? Can you show me how to do a reel and stuff like that? Yeah. Can and you it, put me in my reel? Would you be a re- in my reel? Do they ever ask you that stuff? Like, uh, I they aren't even a lot of them like aren't even like really doing those yet like yeah real is to, real to some people like, it's pretty pretty it's, complex even though it's not to the, to, to the traditional it sounds easy like, but yeah. it's genius at the same time like, right why exactly are people not doing this Bro, right. i went on tour with a tiktoker who has over a million million followers all combined it was a no-brainer to grow my social media following to do that yeah yeah reels yeah. are definitely they're definitely they Right now, Instagram is promoting them a ton. Oh, yeah. I think, compared to TikTok, I think Reels are growing a, lo- a lot faster. So the thing with TikTok, and I, I said it the other day to a friend of mine, um, TikTok has more of a more of a following now. TikTok has more of an audience. They can pick and choose now what they want to mm-hmm. put. That's why people are getting, like, people like me for some reason over the past few weeks are getting stuck at 200, 400 views. Mm-hmm. And then some of my other stuff is skyrocketing to 500,000. Yeah. And it's yeah. because they can pick and choose what they like. Right. And that's why I also... People hate, got options now. Yeah, and that's also yeah. why I hate DJ content because it's so niche-oriented. And it's not, like, publicly oriented, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And niche is a good word it's because a you, word can, you can pronounce it different ways. And people yeah. pick real estate agents <laughs> because they like the person, too. Like, right. Oh, yeah. That's key, like... Because the thing is, there are thousands of agents. There are thousands of loan officers. They yeah. want to help you. You're not you. picking me because I'm doing a different job. They you're, want you. are working with me because you know, yeah. like, and trust me. Right. And they That's like where, you, and they yeah. want you to be, like. They want you to succeed. Too. Yeah. Like they want to get behind you. You know. And going back off of what you said, so Gary Vaynerchuk, to he's a Love a big entrepreneur that I look up to. He says he's like I give everybody all this insight and knowledge, everything I know for free because number one. What works for me is only going to be optimized for me. It's it's like a like a blueprint or like a fingerprint scanner. Right. The stuff I'm telling you guys, this is only what works 100 percent for me. Hey, you know what? You might be able to take a gold nugget, but this is it. Just fits my personality. Yeah. I don't knock on doors. I make videos instead. And the second thing that he says, nobody will work as hard as me. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I will tell you what to do, but. Bear in mind, this is only what's worked for me, and you probably won't work as hard as me. Yeah. So I tell, I tell everybody, I'm like, hey, post a TikTok a day, mm-hmm. like go on Instagram Live, T- take a chance and do a radio show, buy a bill- billboard, do all this stuff. Yeah. Like I'm literally like holding people's hands and walking them through it. And at, at no, not everybody has the same goals. Like some people have, hey, if you have a wife, three kids, and a dog, you get, you're gonna have things to do after five o'clock. Me. I'm seeing houses after five o'clock. Yep. Nights, weekends, holidays. For me, I would rather make money than do other things. That's yeah. where I'm at. Yeah. That's where I'm at. You know, I actually, this is so bad. Um, so I, I calculated like my hourly, like my equivalent hourly rate. And then I'm like, someone who's, I, I don't really care for wanted me to like go on like some random date. And I'm like. I'm like, this is this is a lot of money I could be wasting right now. I'm like, I gotta keep working. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I just don't have half a day to waste anymore. Yeah. You know, like I I just love what I'm doing. Yeah. And yeah. Saturday, Saturday's an open house day, and oh, I'm going okay. with my clients. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The beach will be there. Right. We'll probably actually have more beach than ever with all the well <laughs> climate change. You know. That's true. Well, Fact. that's a that's a positive way to look at it. Yeah, we'll, exactly. have more, we'll have more beach than ever. Do Do you sell a lot of houses near the beach, or are you trying to avoid? Uh... <laughs> So I've, Beach gone, <laughs> so I've I've gone as far east like into the seacoast as Durham so far. Yeah, yeah. But like within even where we are now, if you look at the map of the US, within fifty miles or even a hundred of the coastline, yeah. the water just brings so much. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. so Portsmouth, Rye, Hampton, that it'd be great to get in there. Oh, you know, I know I did Seabrook two weeks ago. Yeah. That was twelve minutes from the beach. That he did was, second okay. street on Manchester too. What was that? He did second street on Manchester too. Oh yeah. Oh, this that was a, that, I love I love that story time. 
that he did on Instagram yeah. about that house. Oh, so, really? Yeah. A, a, yeah. a three family across <laughs> from uh, Dairy Queen on Second Street. It took four months to sell. Yeah. Because they had me list it 100 grand over the comps that I pulled. Oh, wow. But it still went pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> Man, when you got that off your chest, you were just so happy. I thought it was a good one. <sighs> That's a good time to be in real estate right now. That's for sure, huh? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Really good time. Really good and, time. And the thing is, I got into it during a time when things started to get tough. Mm -hmm. So this is the only thing I know. Yeah. It's not like I just like jacked up my efforts like a hundred or a thousand percent. This is just what was necessary to get into the market as a new realtor last year. Yeah. Whereas most people were getting kind of complacent three to five years, 10 years in the business. Sure. But like me, I was like, oh, like this is really hard. I got to work harder, work harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now because the market has softened a little bit, it's smooth sailing. Yeah. You know, yeah. but of course, if you turn on the news, they're like, "Oh, the sky is falling," and I'm like, "Must be a green, a blue patch over Manchester." So, yeah, I mean, the housing market out here is really good right now. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't follow it closely enough, but uh, do you know Jeff Nyan? He's in our chat room. He's he's a, a fan of the show and a fan of the station. He's in real estate. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I have met him, but I'm sure I'd recognize if I saw his, his face or something. Yeah, he made a comment about how much he, uh, and I, I don't I don't really know a lot of Jeff's backstory on how he got into real estate, but he made a comment when you were talking. Oh, here it is. Yeah, he says, uh, I was miserable for so long at work. Now I only work on my terms, really powerful and freeing. So kind of uh, referring to what you were saying there. Yeah, and uh, 100%. It's just like... To be honest, even my own family, like my, like I love him to death, but my dad will be like, he's like, like Josh, like, what are you doing today? <laughs> right. You know? And my dad's I'm just the same like, way. hey, I'm just kind of like, I had an appointment at one and now I have a break until my clients get out at five and then I have a couple showings and I'll write an offer. Yeah. You know? But he sees me like grilling some steak midday, hanging out with the dog. You know what I mean? It's like, hey. Right. <laughs> By all means, be on my team. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. My dad, when I first got into DJing, he was like, what are you, like, why are you doing this when you could be working, like, a really, like, good job? And I'm like, because I love it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Because I love it. And it took my dad a little bit to come on board with it. And now he's sort of on board with it. He sees what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, I, I've often said there's really no greater... Well, I shouldn't say no greater, but one of life's great joys is proving people wrong. Exactly. You know? <laughs> I take joy in it. Selfishly, I take joy in it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, success is the best revenge. But, uh, Josh, this has been wonderful. I've really enjoyed uh, talking with you today. Yeah, I'm thank glad you so I'm, much. I'm, it's I'm, always nice to kind of have a good conversation and uh, break up your day, you know? And uh, anything you want, do you want to plug your social media and, and anything else you want our listeners to know about before you go? Or? Yeah, yeah. So you can reach me. Uh, by following at sold by win w i n n at sold by win on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you name it. Okay, outstanding. All right, well, well, we'll let you get going, Josh. Uh, thank you so much. 